Matte Paintings. For those of you who are new here, uh, matte paintings were a traditional film technique used before the computer era. When a shot was needed, usually containing a vast landscape or a structure that was too impractical and costly to build for real, uh, it was created by a painter with actual paint on an actual piece of glass or board. It was real. So matte painting shots have a certain wonderful painterly quality to them that is, in my opinion, impossible to reproduce digitally. Uh, naturally, since here on this channel we are obsessed with uh, miniatures and other traditional techniques, it was of utmost importance to have at least one matte painting in this film. As a side note, I want to add that we already tried this technique for our film Slice of Life. My buddy Stepan painted four matte paintings for that film, and at that time we had no idea what we were doing. Uh, it was completely experimental, but it turned out pretty well. So, for this film, we decided it would be uh, good to show the whole NASA complex with the main building and the terrain going into the distance. Uh, that's something we could never do in miniature, of course, so matte painting was a reasonable choice. The idea was to take pictures of the miniatures I built until that point and use it as a base for the painting. I also drew the outlines of parking lots on the ground and placed miniature cars in them. Unfortunately, they were not 60s cars, they were actually modern, but they were the only ones I could find uh, on eBay. And we figured that they will be so small in the shot that it won't be a problem. We took some photos from different angles and settled with this one. Then in Photoshop, I replaced my yard with a view of actual Florida landscape, as well as multiplied the tiny cars so the parking lots would be full. So this was the shot that we wanted to get in the end. I sent this image to the printing studio and we got it printed on the canvas that was then stretched on a wall in Stepan's studio. He returned once more in the role of our mad painter, albeit somewhat reluctantly this time. The idea was he would leave the miniatures unpainted, but would paint everything around them that was missing. He started by painting over the sky and the roads, and then he slowly filled in the ground patches in between the roads, using green and brown earthly tones. It was really nice seeing the grassy islands in between parking lots filled in and the image slowly taking shape. Next task was the placement of trees and bushes. First he just suggests the general shape of the plants and later gives them dimensionality by painting the highlight on one side and shadows on the other. As you can see, none of this has to be photorealistic, it just needs to be suggested. The camera can't see that much detail, uh, and the more impressionistic the painting is, more real it will seem in the film. Next, it was time to add some man-made structures and integrate them with the existing miniatures already in the image. To depict the shipyard on the far right, he had to mix the exact shade of purple found in the photograph miniature, ensuring a seamless blend. Over the course of a few days, he was just putting more and more details into the painting. Also, uh, look how he added the dusty tire tracks on the road. It really enhances the realism. Ah, then it was time for Pièce de Résistance, the Apollo 11 rocket. At first, it turned out to be too big, so he wiped it clean off, the advantage to working with oil paints, and painted a smaller one. Next were the palm trees, scattered all over the terrain, and the final touches included streetlights, antennas and some people here and there. So here's the whole painting process one more time fast. And with that, the painting was finished. It, you know, it, it turned out really well. I want to thank Stepan for painting this. Uh, he said he never wants to paint another matte painting again, but you know, he, he always says that, so you never know, we, we might see him again. So, a few months later, during our miniature unit photography, we filmed the matte painting. Of course, the general idea is to have the painting evenly lit, so we decided to film outside and use daylight. But we also did a couple of versions where we used a spotlight to illuminate the sunny side of the painting. I think in the end I chose the evenly lit take, but it's always important to try things, because you never know what, what's gonna work. And now a history lesson on a subtle but powerful effect often used in the old times. What they would do is, they would cover the part of the shot where the sky is and expose the lower part to a piece of film. Then they would rewind the film back to the beginning, cover the exposed part and this time expose the sky. But this time they would slowly move the painting from side to side. When the film was developed, they would get the effect that the sky was moving. Pre pretty cool, right? But check this out, in real life the clouds closer to the camera would move faster than the ones in the back. So how to achieve that? Well, you split the sky in two parts. You expose bottom part, moving the painting slower, and then you expose the upper part while moving the painting faster. 
So this is actual shot from this film and this technique works mind-blowingly awesome. If you want to see this explained in more detail, as well as many other cool techniques, check out the Albert Whitlock's Med Department and Illusion Arts YouTube channel. I've put the link in the description. Uh, please show them some love, because this channel is uh, amazing. And here we are in After Effects, my compositing program of choice. I basically did the same thing. I cut out a hole for the sky and two places where the sea is. And then I used an effect called corner pin that allows you to basically move the corners of the image. I animated only the upper corners from left to right, which created the illusion of a moving sky with the correct parallax. Closer clouds will move faster. And then I just mirrored it for the sea reflection. So that was the first trick towards a realistic shot. But then I encountered a problem. This shot is a part of a bigger scene and all of the other shots were shot with miniatures. On the painting the sunlight was coming from the right, but when we were shooting miniatures we completely forgot about that. And during filming we had sun coming from the left. So since it had to be the same, we decided to film the miniature of the NASA building again with the correct sunlight. And it was tricky because we had to match the exact angle like it was on the matte painting, right? <laughs> One of them finally worked and it looked good, but now the sun didn't match other buildings. So I just masked the parts that should be brighter and just cranked up the contrast, uh, mimicking the sun. And you know, alright, problem fixed, it looked good. And frankly, this could probably work as a final shot and it would be fine. But I was never really happy with the miniature cars that were in the shot. In the back of my mind, I, I knew they were modern cars and I decided to try and replace them. At that time I was learning Blender, which is our fantastic 3D program, and I imported a matte painting into it. Then I created geometry wherever roads or parking lots were. You know, from the side it looked like this, but from the camera's POV it looked perfect. I found some 3D models of cars uh, that looked like they were from 60s, and I filled the parking lots with them, placing them exactly over the modern cars. I probably had only 5 or 6 different cars, but I used a cool trick in Blender. Uh, here it is if you want to copy it. But what it does is it changes the color of the car whenever you make a copy. So that way I could easily make it seem like all the cars are unique. Alright, now I figured I have these 3D cars. I could probably animate some of them to give more life to the shot. So I did. And some are just driving in a straight fashion. Some are turning the corner. And some are leaving the parking. Whoa, that was close! I found a model of an old school Greyhound bus and I placed two of them in the shot. I figured like it's maybe an organized trip for some school kids that came to watch the launch or something, you know, I don't know. I also had some green screen people I had lying on my hard drive. They're just 2D cardboard cutout basically, but from, you know, 300 feet in the air, no one will know. So anyway, I had a living and breathing parking lot here and it was time to put it into the shot. Uh, there's a nice feature in Blender where you can select the ground object and turn it into a shadow catcher. This means that in the rendered animation the ground plane will not appear, but the shadows from the cars will be rendered. So everything but the cars and shadows is transparent. Then I placed it over the matte painting and it looked pretty good. But still, I was missing one more element. Something that would make the shot even cooler and draw you in it. So during my research of old NASA photographs, I found this image and I really liked this old school helicopters. So I downloaded a free model of the helicopter. I textured it using photographs of real helicopters so it would look somewhat realistic and obviously animated the blades spinning. I wanted it to fly into the shot right next to the camera. I felt it was a dynamic and just plainly cool intro into the shot, right? Uh, I, I wanna point out that I was actually thinking of buying a plastic model kit and building and filming it for real, but I, I had to do so much work on these VFX shots that some things just had to be done in 3D, so you know, <laughs> it is what it is. I also added a trail of smoke following the helicopter and did a subtle blur from the heat that was coming out of the exhaust. And that was pretty much it. So after only four months of on and off work, the matte painting shot was done. Piece of cake, right? That's it. Uh, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, I, I don't think I have anything else to add here. So I'm uh, abruptly ending the video now.